Kelly Dodsworth and today I want to talk to you about perimenopause or the time leading up to menopause. So a lot of people don't really even understand what menopause is. So menopause is actually the menopause which means the last period but we don't know when that's happened until you've gone 12 months of no bleeding and then you can say ah that was the last one. So that's the menopause. After that we call it postmenopause. prior to that we call it peri menopause, P-E-R-I, that means the time leading into. So when women are in this perimenopausal time, and it can last for a year or two, we can have quite variable menstrual cycles. So they can change in how long between periods, they can change in the type of bleeding that we get to be either lighter bleeding or heavier bleeding or more painful bleeding. So a number of things can change. Some cycles we might in fact also have other symptoms like premenstrual symptoms that go on, whereas some cycles might be fine. So it's quite variable. Now the reason is that normally in a female cycle, we release estrogen throughout our cycle until we have a peak at ovulation or mid-cycle time. And after we release an egg, we make progesterone as well. So we have estrogen and then we have some progesterone. When you get to this stage of the female cycle, the perimenopause, that might not happen every month. So you might get some estrogen being produced, but you may not get a, an egg released, and then you don't make progesterone. That leaves us in a state of imbalance where there's some estrogen, not enough progesterone, or what we call estrogen dominance. Another time you might get actually low estrogen as well, and then no ovulation and no progesterone. So both hormones are low. And in that state, that's when we tend to get the hot flushes and the night sweats and the poor sleep. So low estrogen tends to cause those symptoms. Uh, if we have a month like that or a cycle like that, quite often the very next one, our body says, well, that wasn't great. Let's have a better go. And we get more stimulation. And you can actually get a really high level of estrogen in response to having had a low level. So that next cycle, you might actually get a lot of premenstrual symptoms from high estrogen. So breast fullness and tenderness, fluid retention, significant mood changes. So it can be all over the place and one cycle doesn't tell us what will happen for the next one. So each cycle is its own little story. So that can make it quite hard to keep track of what's going on. If you do go and have a blood test to look at the hormone levels, they're a little snapshot of time. They don't tell me about the month before or the month after, they're just in that moment. So the best way to keep track of what's happening is actually to record some symptoms if they're significant. So if you have particular breast fullness, tenderness or mood change, you know, make a note of that. If you're getting some night sweats or feeling hot flushes starting to happen, make a note of that because that tells us more than actually a blood test does. So this time leading up to menopause means we've still got the ovaries functioning. They still have some capacity. They're not quite done yet. So we can try to support them a little bit. There's a beautiful herb called Vitex or Chaste Tree that helps to support the ovaries to keep releasing the eggs and have hormonal balance. So you can look at taking some Vitex, a thousand milligrams a day. We can look at balancing out the things like vitamin B6 and magnesium that help us with our hormonal production. If you're getting the breast fullness and tenderness, some evening primrose oil can help. If you're actually starting to run quite low in the hormones quite often with the hot flushes and the night sweats, then we can actually do some testing around those levels. And if they are low, we can look at using a few natural hormones to balance things out. We often start with some progesterone cream because the estrogen's often still happening. It's just the ovulation or the eggs not being released and you're low in progesterone. So the first step is often just to lift that up a little bit. Once you're further along and we're not really getting much ovarian activity again, then you might need a little bit of estrogen and progesterone from there. Once you've actually gone through menopause, it's a bit easier because there's just no hormones being made. So whenever we test, we're actually looking at low levels of hormones. It's not this variation happening and then we can balance it out in a slightly different way. So if you think you might be in this perimenopausal time, take note of your symptoms. If they're becoming distressing, you know, come along and see somebody, look at balancing them out as best you can, because what we want to do is make sure that we're creating better health for you. So I'm Dr. Kylie Dodsworth. If you want to send me some questions, you can check me out at the website below and I'll see you next time. Bye.